to win special prizes. All right. All right. So there you go, guys. Now we're going to proceed with our next speaker. Okay, so to talk to us about solving real-world problems with mobile apps, he will, he is... He actually started a career as a management consultant with the Boston Consulting Group. He chose to join the world of entrepreneurship in 2012 when he co-founded Zalora Philippines. I'm a big fan. He left mid-2013 to co-found Grab Taxi Philippines and now serves as its managing director. All right, so guys, the managing director of uh, Grab Taxi on solving real world problems with mobile apps, may we call on Mr. Brian. A round of applause, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm here to talk about, uh, to talk a bit more about how to solve real world problems with mobile apps. Now, I'm sure a lot of you here are developers thinking of the next big thing here. Um, I'm not here to discourage, but I'm here to tell you once you get into trying to solve real world problems with mobile apps, it's a lot of time and investment and a lot of hard work that you need to put in that goes beyond developing the app. So just to go back and give you a brief background on myself to provide some context. Uh, when, uh, when I co-founded Zalora, I was mainly managing the whole operation side of things. So I'm very familiar with the physical movement of products. And even then, I always believed that technology was a enabler and uh, a solution to solve a lot of manual, manual work, so to speak. So double encoding of stuff where you need to bring pieces of paper back to the office and encode that later on. So I was always a firm believer of that. So when this opportunity came up with Grab Taxi, I quickly took it. Because I, having lived in Singapore for a while, I saw how convenient it was to get a taxi during rush hour when you needed one, with just a couple of clicks on the phone. We didn't have that here. So there in itself, there was an opportunity. But before I came in, I didn't realize how difficult it would be to grow the base. And I'll talk, about, I'll talk a bit more about that later on as we go along. Slide, please. Next slide. Okay. So this picture here, um, for those who, who were in the mobile con festival last Monday would have seen this. This is a picture of one of our fleets. Um, it has around 100 plus drivers who we all deployed mobile phones to. I mean, you can see how happy they are. This was their first interaction with technology beyond a Nokia 5110 or a MyPhone dual SIM dumb phone. Um, when we first started Grab Taxi and started deploying handsets to drivers, they were dumbfounded. We'd spend 75% of the time training them how to use the phone instead of how to use the Grab Taxi driver app. Now, if you ask me about solving real world problems with, with mobile apps, I, re I see it more on the side of our drivers um, than on our passengers, to be honest. Because Seeing how the drivers have interacted with the internet in the past, which was, I guess, through the pisonets or to the, to the internet cafes of the world, now they have their own personal device that they can interact with the internet. And the, the next thing you know is that they're downloading ways, they're downloading chat apps, um, they're doing uh, video calls with fellow drivers, so this exposure to them, to the internet, has told me one thing, that there's still a wealth of opportunity for the bottom of the pyramid. Creating apps that target the bottom of the pyramid to enrich their lives, both in terms of livelihood, in terms of, um, in terms of pleasure, in terms of uh, them connecting with family, with, with uh, friends, 
there's still a huge opportunity there. What blocks it right now is access to those apps. It's the device. Even though penetration of smartphones are growing, there are more smartphones being shipped every quarter, they're not reaching that bottom of the pyramid. But it's only a matter of time before it does, with the smartphone prices coming down. But you can see in the way they use it, the way they interact with the phone, that, that th they want it, and at some point you can monetize on it. So I, I see that this device, the small device that you fit in your pocket, is the great equalizer. It, it, helps, it helps create a, a world of opportunity. Now, just to talk a bit more about this, the evolution of, of mobile uh, services, of what they can do, what people can do with, uh, with smartphones, with computers. It all started with communication. First, it was the need to communicate faster. Uh, pick up your phone, call, call someone instantly, became, became messaging, so you can message someone instantly, get that res reply once. I, I still remember the day when I don't hear a beeping sound on my phone, I constantly check the phone, see, wh see why people aren't replying. Then it moved on to information, so the world of Google, access to information at your fingertips. You wanted to know something, Google it. That quick. Then it moved to physical goods and, uh, and electronic goods. So Amazon, uh, the world of Amazon, now they're doing Amazon Prime, get your products within a day. Uh, it moved to music, download music, Netflix, download movies. Uh, everything instantly um, for both hard and soft goods without you having to leave the comfort of your home. But now it's a new world. Now what a lot of companies like Grab Taxi are, is doing is trying to do on-time, just-in-time service delivery. It's no longer a product. It's no longer a soft good. Uh, it's no longer information. It's a service, which is a bit more encompassing than, uh, than you delivering an iPad or an iPhone. With a service, you need to control the whole customer experience. So when you, when you try and develop something that solves a real-world problem, what you will get as a developer are real-world problems. <laughs> because you now deal with the real world. You now have to interact with the individual pieces of the whole ecosystem for you to get it uh, to get it to a level where you can succeed. Now, why, why are these what we call E2E, end-to-end -end, uh, mobile apps uh, blossoming in the market. Again, it goes back to the smartphone. It goes back to that little thing that you have in your pocket. Why? What we realized when we did Grab Taxi was that there, there's a huge amount of supply of taxis out there at any given time. And there's, there's a need for people to get home. Now, for taxis to drive around to find where the demand is creates traffic, creates congestion. Um, and for, for the demand to find where the supply is, they're not going to go walk around Makati City waving, a, waving their hands trying to look for a taxi. So the mobile phone became a solution to bring those two parts of the puzzle together. What we do is help help idle supply find uh, the, the demand that needs that supply right now. And interestingly, what we found was that the unserved demand has the willingness to pay. So it's not, they're not looking for supply for free. They need a taxi, they're willing to pay. They're willing to pay to have one come over and pick them up. With a smartphone, they're able to take this and find supply, order on the spot, and it became, becomes a more fair allocation process. Before systems like ours, everything was, was uh, call, call a number and get a taxi. So what happens there is that uh, operator dispatches to all the taxis in the fleet via radio that someone needs a pickup. And uh, it's not always the case that the first guy who says, I'm gonna pick him up is the one who arrives first so he loses the job. 
So because of the mobile device and, and the, the wonders of cloud, uh, cloud the cloud-based systems, we're able to allocate more fairly because there's no more human intervention. Now, there are other companies like Grab Taxi out there linking both supply and demand in other industries, in other verticals. So for transport, there's companies like ours, and I'm sure you've heard of companies like Uber, uh, which Google invested into, uh, Halo, which, and a lot of other e-hailing apps um, focused on transport. Now, there's a company called Handy Book, I don't know if you've heard of it, um, in, the, in the US that connects uh, homeowners with uh, professionals who can help fix your kitchen, fix your IKEA closet. So when I was growing up in uh, San Juan, I would see lots of those signs um, on cardboard plaques or wooden plaques that says Tubero and a phone number. So that, that's slowly moving into your phone. So that's what HandyBook does. If, if you need a plumber on the spot, you Two clicks on your phone, a plumber comes over. And in the vertical of hotels, uh, of, of, tran or of tourism, there's a company called Hotels Tonight, which aggregates idle capacity of rooms um, and then allocates that uh, to, to demand. That needs it on, on an immediate basis. So the question I pose here is what other services that have enough liquidity in supply and demand that you can create an app for? And there's still a lot. I, I, mean, I can see a lot. There's laundry services um, and, and the like. Uber, at one point, delivered ice creams on the spot uh, to test out the market. But as you go on your daily lives, apps like this would work if there's enough liquidity. So you just need to see what, what industry is not yet touched by this. And the uh, developing markets like the Philippines and other markets in Southeast Asia, they're still alien to to such forms of, of apps that would help improve lives. So there's still a lot of opportunity there. Now, who here has, who here takes taxis? There's a few. Who here has taken a grab taxi? Okay, so, so to those of you who have not uh, taken a grab taxi, what it is, it, it helps address the need for transport. What we have is a passenger app which you can download and a driver app which we issue to drivers. What the app aims to do is to get you a taxi within five minutes of you booking it. So at face value, it seems very easy. Passenger app, you say where you're coming from, where you're going to. There's a driver app where drivers receive a message that someone needs a ride and driver shows up. But beneath it, there's a lot of work. You need to train drivers. You need to issue phones. You need to microfinance phones for drivers. You need to make sure that the drivers actually show up. So there's a lot of work. It's no longer a, I mean, we grew from zero to around 40 employees in three months because we couldn't handle the scale at, at which we were growing. So. Creating apps that solve real-world problems, that, that have a human element, which is the end product. Because the end product here is not, not the game, not the app. The end product here is someone, a physical person picking you up. Controlling that experience uh, takes a lot of work. So... We, we set out to have a bigger goal. So in terms of what problems did we want to fix uh, in the real world on, on the two sides of the platform that we had. One was for drivers and one was for passengers. So for drivers, the, the fare of taxis here has not increased in the longest time. Uh, as gas, gas prices have increased, um, food prices have increased. So they were making less, they were taking home less. So what we wanted was to create an avenue for them to make a bit more. That's why when we pitch Grab Taxi to drivers, it's more than just an app. It's a livelihood that we're selling, that we're giving to them. And from, for those drivers who actively use it, they've experienced a 15 to 60% bump in their take home. Now, 
this also helps them from having to circle around looking for passengers, which impacts both traffic in the society and uh, it, it lessens the wastage on patrol. Lastly, the phone, as I mentioned a while ago, serves as a gateway to the internet. A lot of them on their day, days off give it to their kids, to their wives for them to use it. And for passengers, the app was intentionally really targeted to women for safety, uh, for safety reasons. Uh, it's also used for, for people as an alternative for driving when they want to go out and to control the regulated fare. Now, when, when developing an app uh, and when you try and solve a real world problem, try and develop something that goes beyond just one solution. That, that has lots of positive externalities around. This is something that we found, at least, that it's easier to sell to investors when you're trying to raise or, or to partners here locally, both the local government, the LGUs, the, the fleet operators, even to the, to the end consumer, to the driver. It's not always about money. Go, go beyond that. Think, think of the positive effects you'll have to their families, to society, and then you can help build a better ecosystem that way. Now, for Grab Taxi, the three things that we that we sort of want to push and espouse that we're all about is again, it's not about travel. There's nothing here that we explicitly explicitly say travel. It's about safety of the ride. It's about certainty of getting a taxi. It's about speed at which you get the taxi app. What we try and push here is not one product, but rather is an ex it's an experience. A lot of the promos that we do are very two-sided promos because we're a two-sided platform. When we do promos, I always try and make sure that the driver is involved and the passenger is involved. This creates better harmony in the, in the ecosystem. It creates better interaction between the two sides of the platform. And which brings me to this bottom line, this, this notion of a bottom line impact. You need financial returns to make it sustainable, to make it attractive for investors when you need to raise funds. But you also have a positive social impact, which reinforces, um, which reinforces the ability to, to make profits because of the way that you can scale it up. Uh, and also gives you a very good feeling at the end of the day to see that you've helped um, drivers. So now, if we look at Grab Taxi as a whole and any other app that tries to, to deliver a real world experience at the end of the day, there's three things that you need to, to remember to have and to focus on. One is creating balance, creating balance in supply and demand. We're not like Candy Crush, that we can have millions and millions of users and have, a st and have a limited team and all you need to scale up are your servers or your technical parts. No, every time we have a thousand new passengers coming on board, we need to train 200 more drivers. And that takes a lot of legwork. Second one is trust. It is up to you, to the app, to create trust in the system because people won't look to the supply, they won't look to the demand, they won't blame the endpoints, they'll blame the middleman that connects those two endpoints together. And lastly is creating an experience. I'll talk more about these three. So balancing supply and demand. It's very critical that every day what, what we look at personally is, is there enough supply to serve the demand? Is there enough demand to keep the supply happy? If we have too few drivers, People, people making bookings won't get served. If we have too few passengers, drivers who we microfinance the phones for will say this is a useless platform. So it's a very delicate balance that you have to strike. And every day you need to look at that weighing scale on both sides and see which one's tipping a bit more. So you, need, so you know where to focus your efforts. If you can't get this right, people will lose faith in your platform and you'll slowly see all that marketing money that you've put in to, to get users slowly drop away. The second is building trust. 
when we first set out training drivers, and we and and we we conduct trainings for drivers to make sure that they know the system. The questions that we'll get is, "Pano kung magnanako yung pasahero? Pano natin malalaman yun? Pano kung hindi nagpakita yung pasahero? Like, what if the passenger doesn't show up?" They had a lot of doubts going into it. Um, passengers, likewise, uh, didn't really know that it, it was a real product. When we first marketed it out, people would download, make bookings, taxi would arrive, and they'll tell the taxi driver, hey, I was just testing it. So I'm not going to pay you. But what does this create? This creates fear on the taxi drivers. The next time that someone books, something shows up there, they're not going to want to take it because they're going to travel all the way to pick up the passenger and then the passenger says they're just testing it. So how do you build rules in your app to restrict this kind of behavior? How do you punish? What we do is if the passenger cancels constantly, we'll block the passenger. Because it's, we need to take care of both sides. It's not just passenger welfare, but also driver welfare. When... Uh, when things don't happen, when things don't get, when taxis don't arrive, like I said, passengers will not call the taxi company. They'll complain on Facebook for the whole world to see that Grab Taxi did not deliver its car. But it's not my fault if the driver didn't arrive. But they see it as our fault. So we take on that responsibility. We take on that responsibility to make sure we educate both sides. Lastly is build an experience. So I don't know if anyone took a grab taxi in, in, uh, during the last week of October. Um, we created a Halloween program where select drivers would give trick-or-treat bags to the passenger. And the passenger who Instagrams it has a chance to win something. So this goes beyond just providing a transport um, solution. This goes into creating that customer experience. Because that's what creates recall. That what, that's what creates a uh, happy feeling at the end of the day for people to come back to use your platform. Now, why I'm, why I'm very passionate and interested about a company like Grab Taxi is because there's so much you can do. Not just offline, but also offline. So it expands the horizons of the possibilities of promotions, of the way you can interact with people, um, because you're because you're touching both offline and online and drivers and passengers. So I guess the last statement that I'll say is that when you're thinking of developing an app, don't just think of a solution for a problem. Think of developing a customer experience around a market need. So it's more holistic that way. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. So thank you so much, Sir Brian. So now we are open for questions and answer portion. Dan, are you in the audience right now? Yep, I'm here and we have here, uh, what's your name, sir? Vince Guerra. Uh, actually, I'm from Cebu City and uh, you know, this was an experience yesterday because we were here to attend a certain training yesterday and uh, I met a guy in the same training. It just so happened we don't know each other. We just met there in the con uh, in the training, and uh, we took the same flight, uh, 5 a.m. But uh, from from the airport to the venue along uh, Acosta in Makati, I only paid 120 pesos. The other guy paid 270 pesos. Okay, okay. just imagine the difference. So first and foremost, I'd like to commend this uh, application. Okay, this is a very helpful one, especially for those who are not uh, familiar in Manila. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of Manloloco uh, taxi drivers, di ba? Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, it's not technical na ng question. It's more about the safety. Because you mentioned, it, oh, una, you target for women. Second, uh, in general, the safety is like, uh, how, how can we uh, forward our issues do you have a certain customer service yes. wherein that would accommodate yung mga issues na na-encounter namin? And how is 
these uh, issues will be addressed. Are you having a tie-up with any government agencies that would address to this? Yes. Thank you. So, two things. First thing, I'll do a plug. We launched in Cebu recently, so we have taxis in Cebu now. So you can use you can use Grab Taxi in Cebu. Um, on the safety issue, after you book a taxi on Grab Taxi, you see the the driver's uh, picture, the driver's plate number, the driver's name, and the estimated fare based on the the LTFRB regulated charging mechanism. Now, that immediately tells you how much more or less you should pay. Number one. Number two, after you get get the, a taxi and uh ka na sa taxi pwede ka comment on the driver which goes directly to us to uh, assess whether the whether or not the driver performed well yesterday we just gave two drivers warnings um we gave them a warning because they accepted the booking and never showed up thankfully because of our training and continuous monitoring of the drivers wala pa naman sa drivers namin na report in any safety incidents but what we do is we police the drivers by taking away their their means of earning more in the grab taxi in the grab taxi form so we we take them off the system if there are any reports we suspend them whereas last week they were earning an extra 500 pesos more this week wala. because they misbehave we take them off the system so, like I said, we police both sides. Um, secondly, whether or not we're working with government agencies, we're working with the LTFRB, with the OTC, with the Department of Tourism, actually, and uh, with CTOM in Cebu, and I don't know if you're familiar, it's the MMBA of Cebu, to directly report incidents. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with recent reports of the modus operandi yung naglalagay ng parang sent in the taxi for a healing passenger. In fact, the first victim of that contacted Grab Taxi. It wasn't a Grab Taxi uh, that she rode, but she contacted Grab Taxi thanking us for our service because from after that incident, all she did was take Grab Taxis. And we were actually the conduit between her and the LTFRB to find out what really happened. So what we're seeing is we're becoming a central clearinghouse for complaints. Um, for taxis, uh, even if it's not our taxi, they'll they'll contact Grab Taxi and complain about the taxi, and that's okay for us because you know as as one of our missions is really to create that better environment of public safety. All right, so thank you to our participants from Cebu. We have a special gift for you. We have lots of questions. Hello, on the other side. One moment. Yep, introduce yourself. Yeah, good afternoon, Tin Gonzaga. Hi. My question is, uh, will it require an online and, uh, uh, connection for it to be used? Or if so, uh, how would how those uh, who, are not, uh, who, who doesn't have a connection can avail this uh, service? Thank you. Uh, that's a very good question. Right now, you need a data connection uh, to use the service because it's an app that connects to the internet. And... Uh, and uh, once you book a taxi, it refreshes the app real time. So you actually see the taxi moving towards you. We won't be able to do that without an internet connection. But we're working on other solutions uh, to enable booking via call, via text. Um, but that's, that's further down the roadmap. Uh, right now, we're focused on uh, smartphones with data connections. All right, thank you. Um, you all will receive a special gift. Kim, it's in the right aisle here. By the way, we have a question here, but can we get a light from the upper state, upper area? Here we go. So we have a question here. Uh, hi, Brian. My name is uh, Chris Marquez. Hi. Uh, I'd just like to ask a business question. Yeah. Uh, I wonder uh, how you were able to convince the owners and operators of the taxis. And uh, I heard uh, before, yung chisme siguro namigay kayo ng cellphone, pero now you're saying it's uh, microfinanced. Yes. So, I also wonder how you were able to convince the drivers to buy the cellphones. Okay. 
the, the smartphones, I mean. Um, without revealing our trade secrets, uh, for the operator, that's, that's the thing with, with industries like this. Eh? Where, when you're trying to solve like, all these real-world problems in, in existing industries, it takes a lot of convincing to, to convince someone who's already making a lot of money from running their taxi business without you to move to a system like this. So what's in it for them is always the question that they'll ask. Una, una tatanong nila, magano ba yan? And then they'll ask, what's in it for me? So we had to address those two questions. One thing we did, we say, operator, all we need from you is your permission to talk to your drivers. That's it. You, you're our partner, we work with you, and the benefits you get from the system is you can track now, you can now track where your drivers are, and uh, it increases their means of livelihood. So hindi na sila short sa boundary. They won't, they won't, at the end of the day, have not have enough money to pay for, for, for the rental of the car. Um, for the drivers, especially those who came from a system of using the radio, they were already paying 50 pesos a day for it. And they weren't, being, they weren't able to bring that phone home, uh, the radio home, or use it for, for any other purpose than, than uh, receiving calls for a taxi. With the smartphone, we just presented that they can do a lot more. And it's their personal device. So what we do, we don't give phones for free. That's, that make, does it, that um, kills the business, kills profitability. What we do is we microfinance the phones. We microfinance the phones so drivers can afford it. And the selling point to drivers is that this is so much more than just a cell phone. This is a means for, for livelihood. And a lot of drivers accept. We have more than 2,000 drivers who've taken this program on. Um, so it's actually not that difficult convincing the drivers. Once you, once you have scale in the, in the market, um, it's not difficult to convince the supply side. What's harder is convincing the demand side. From uh, Instead of standing in the street hailing a taxi, how much is your time worth? Is it worth the extra booking fee of 70 pesos that we charge? All right, thank you. We have one more here on the Dela premier area. Um, hi, Brian. Um, once again, I commend you for your um, application. I have it on my phone, actually, and I tried it. And unfortunately, I'm one of those who experimented with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't really show up. It was too good to be true, actually. Um, my question is very business-related. Um, in terms of... Um, catering to the internal ano, aspect of the company. Because right now, we have this very, very hard competition. Uh, it involves something internal, something more hindi and consumer related. Like, Are the mobile apps still relevant to companies like that? For instance, uh, water management, waste management, yung mga ganun, hindi masyadong nakikita ng, ano, ng mga consumers. They are. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of corporate companies actually wanting to use a Grab Taxi-like system for dispatching of their vehicles. Um, but one thing I say that, that I guess in this age, our generation thinks immediately is, oh, there's a problem, let's develop an app for it on the smartphone. But if you look back on using, uh, using simple phones for order triggering, for sales report management, for all these types of companies. For example, a very simple example, uh, Nawasa or Meralco, they have collectors going out. They have collectors going out, reading the meters, collecting. It's not smart metering yet. We're not yet at that stage. So one simple app that can be very useful for them is better tracking of collections and better tracking of uh, how, much, how much the meter says. So there's less paperwork done at the back office later on when the when the agent comes back and there's better tracking of the cash flow. So apps like that that no one sees, no one cares about from the end consumer side, like you said, is still very important for large businesses. So there's still a lot of opportunity. It's actually, in fact, easier to sell because that's one contract with a large corporation. 
than having to talk to hundreds of thousands of consumers and trying to convince them to, to use it. But the barrier to entry there is that some of these large corporations are very set in the way they do things. Na allergic sila. They're allergic to spend a bit more on a 4,000 peso smartphone that will make things easier for their, for their accounting, for their salesperson. That's the challenge you have. So if you can get past that, there's still a lot of opportunity for, for large industry solutions. All right, thank you. And we have one final question here on the left. Here, um, yes, sir. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Yes, hello. Uh, hello. So, um, I have a good experience with Grab Taxi. Um, I was uh, in a queue with the mall, oh. Oh. and uh, yes. after that, uh, one of the taxi um, uh, has one, and uh, I, I, uh, I um, booked one. Uh, drive with that taxi. And yeah. And I was uh, happy because the, the driver is very, uh, very jolly and he asked, uh, Sir, uh, what is tethering? Because I want to uh, share my Wi-Fi to all my passengers. Wow. And uh, I, ju I just said, um, that's good uh, promotions for Grab Taxi because if uh, you have a uh, client that is uh, um, needing, uh, need to check his uh, uh, okay. emails and yeah. The driver is very um, jolly to share his uh, Wi-Fi access. That's that's uh, what I love to, to the Grab Taxi. Right now, my question is: uh, Can you see the saturation of uh, the app? Because I, I have uh, heard your competitor doing the same uh, um, uh, uh, business as you right. are. And do you see one a taxi having two apps? Uh, in the near future, I'm seeing that uh, for 20% growth of that uh, transportation sector, could it be sustain your business model? Thank you. Um, firstly, thank you for trying it. And not all taxis give free tethering to passengers, so don't expect. But this is this is what I enjoy hearing. Eh. The drivers, na sila yun kusang nag uh, interact with the passengers. I have some drivers who turn on the aircon before the passenger comes to make the car temperature lower, so that when the passenger comes in, it feels better. But these are all initiatives from the driver. But to answer your question. Yes, there are a lot of e-hailing apps coming out in the market. Um, there's us, there's another one. There's a large one from, uh, from uh, abroad coming into the market. So there's a lot of, yes, there's a lot, there, there will be a point of saturation. Um, there are only limited sets of taxis. So I do see a world where one taxi will have two phones, three phones even. In Hong Kong, taxis there have five phones, nakalinya. You think that the taxi is selling cell phones, but I, I'm serious. I kid you not. The five cell phones, all booking apps. Where where competition will become is which app is able for the for the driver side. Which app is able to deliver a passenger faster uh, or more passengers, more consistently, more constantly. And the second thing on the driver side. Not all drivers will pay for a data plan. So that's an immediate barrier to entry here in the Philippines, in the developing market. They can put two apps on the same phone, that's fine, but will they invest in a 50 peso only plan every day? If there are enough passengers, then maybe. But right now, we don't see that happening yet. And on the passenger side, you always want to be the first app that they'll use. Because what we provide is a commodity, it's a generic service. You get a taxi. So what you want to create on the passenger side, like I said, it's, it's really an experience. Is it just booking a taxi that they get or something more? So when we do promos, like today we have a promo with Cinema Jam, it's creating an ecosystem. It gives them a good feeling. A lot of other companies do this. It's not just a straightforward, here's a taxi. If you look at Lyft and how, how they do it in the US, the icons that they use, it gives you a general feeling of community. Everyone's happy. Uh, if you look at Uber, it's always the black cab experience, the, the executive feeling experience. And they charge a premium for that. So in short, um, yes, lo lots more competition will be coming in. And there will reach a point of saturation. But I think we're around 18 months away from that. Not, not at the moment yet. Because the market's still wide open. There's still 
it's around 40,000 taxi drivers who we haven't spoken to yet. And that's just in Metro Manila. All right, thank you. That's very interesting to have a tethered Wi-Fi enabled taxi, right? And let's just, we'll have one last question from this side as he's very eager, eager to ask a question. Talagang tumakbo talaga siya, babati pa yata siya sa mga friends niya dito. Okay, um, sir, good afternoon. Um, I yes. really Hello. admire your application. Thank you. Uh, and I see a lot of people here admire your application. But you. um, my question is not about the application. Well, my question is, um, what advice can you give for those organizations or for those students or for those youth that just started building software applications that can solve real problems. Because um, I've seen, I've been in some conferences and I've seen, um, I, I've seen ideas from other Filipinos. Uh, I've seen ideas that can solve a real problem. I've seen organizations that have a unique unique solution to a certain problem, but really their project or their, or their mobile app is not working well in the market. So, so my question is, what advice can you give for those, orga for those organizations that just started, or for those organizations that has a unique solution to a problem, but they just got started in building software applications? I guess the first question that I need to ask there is, do they already know who their client is? Are they clear on who the end user is? Because a lot of people can build, but don't really test if there's a demand. When we launched, we didn't launch right away. We didn't advertise to the whole world right away. We tested first if there's demand. We did, we did two pilot launches before we did a beta launch and then we did a grand launch. So there is a lot of risk in building these things. Whenever I think of a new idea and want to build an app for it or a solution for it, I'll always first do a market study. I'll always first test whether or not the idea works. And then often, <laughs> often than not, I go out and sell something I don't have. So, so I'll commit and say, oh, I can do that, I can do that, and, and I don't have it. But I have the confidence that my team that's, that, that's standing behind me is able to sort of push that kind of solution. So I guess don't be afraid to sell something you don't have. If you watch Jobs, the movie, that's what Steve Jobs did. He sold something he didn't have and just figured out how to do it. But don't go extreme naman, di ba? But, but one thing, one thing that is that. Test the market. Make sure that there's demand for it. Or make sure what your path to monetization is. And then stick to what you're doing. Because a lot of people will pivot. They'll see, ay, konti lang yung customers dito, hindi kumikita ng pera. Then they pivot. They'll try and change what they're doing. But sometimes it's just a matter of time before you hit that inflection point. And I, I, I cannot say when that inflection point will happen because it differs for each app, for each type of industry, for each type of company. Like for us, I don't believe we've hit our inflection point. And like we're, we're, not, we're bleeding money because it, we're in investment mode, right? But if we pivot now and try to monetize, it kills the whole business going forward. So you just need to stick to your guns so to speak. So, test out if there's demand, know when to pivot, don't be ashamed to pivot, but, but don't do it at every, at every um, drop of the pin, you, you, you change what you're doing. Uh, and then be clear on how you want to monetize. Do you monetize information? Do you monetize the service? Do you monetize the application itself or a product? So you need to be clear on those three things before you start, even start developing anything. Thank you, sir. Here, here's your T-shirt for running to me and ask a question. Thank you very much, Mr. Brian. Cool. Thank and you this so much, sir. Our right. morning session. So thank you so much, sir, for. Okay, so thank you so much for sharing us about solving real-world problems with mobile apps. And he also mentioned about three things. I know that you. Uh, listen to him. We have first creating balance. What's the second? Trust. And the third is experience. All right, you did listen. So anyway, Dan, I'm sure everyone is already hungry. Are you hungry, guys? Yes. Okay. So for the meantime, I so don't. We, I'd oh. like to show our other 
prizes. Can you help me? I think it's falling. So what so do we have, have here? T-shirts. And we also have a mug. And here we have tumblers. We have pens and notebooks here. So just keep tweeting, guys. And later on, we're going to announce. Yes, we have a handy daddy notebook. Yeah, actually, I have one special prize to give. Oh. It's very interesting because actually if, um, we are reading all your tweets right now. Yes. And something really caught my attention. And okay. I really want her to be here on stage. Okay, wait. <laughs> Let me just read her tweet. Okay, sing it. It's sing really it. funny. Just go keep on tweeting us, guys. Okay, so keep tweeting, guys. And uh, by the way, the food will be served from your respective seats. So just stay re wherever you are right now. And uh, later on during lunchtime, we will going to give you the prizes and the raffle draw, right? Yep, so big prizes await you guys. So right now, I have here... Um, Oh wait, right, before bounce. that, you're just going to read some new, uh, some tweets. All right, that's good. Okay, so from Tony and Mangugat, uh, as a dev, it has always been a rewarding experience when your users' lives improve. Lives improve. Ayan. Kudos to Grab Taxi. All right, so we also have from Raquel Evangelista, these events can help inspire young people by letting them see what current developers are doing and how they are succeeding. Thank you so much. So we're having a lot of good feedback from you guys. So keep tweeting us. Keep, keep tweeting. Keep yeah. um, posting your selfies because um, you will get a chance to win prizes later on. But I really want to insist to give this prize to this girl. Okay. So this is girl? a hardbound notebook from, wow, from Stack, Exchange Stack Exchange and a pen. Limited edition, right? Limited edition because it's endless papers. Okay. Okay, so who's that lucky girl and what is her tweet or Yeah. Oh. Um there's actually a relevance why I'm giving her this notebook and pen. Okay. Because her tweet goes like this. Mm -hmm. The cutest thing. MCs using paper in a mobile development conference. Sorry, I can't. Yeah. She, was, she was totally kidding, but she's it's, it's actually again, um, again, 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 again. It's really again. cute, right? It's okay, really cute. What what what? She again. said the cutest thing. MC's using paper in a mobile development conference. So now, you know, I'm just using my phone right now. If you have seen me earlier, I wasn't holding any paper anymore. Who's so I want to call you up on stage for your um, guts and for being bold. Sorry for you know, using paper, guys. You're just humans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... So I want to call Lex Javier at Complexness. Yeah. Where are you? I want to talk to you. Uh -huh. But she got a point, right? Yeah, she, she has She's a coming. point. There okay. you are. Lagot <laughs> kasakay. Hi Lex, where where are you from? Uh, UPD. UPD. Oh, you're you're a student. So what are you taking up? Comsai. Wow. Eh kung ikaw kaya ipag-host ko dito at walang cellphone cellphone ha. Kasi <laughs> 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 nga cellphone nito dapat. Oh, oh sige. Wala nang kape. Wala naman eh. <laughs> Just kidding. Hay pa kasi dapat magbigay ng Oh, dapat bigyan ko muna cellphone. I think that would be a good app guys to, yes. to make, right? Um a hosting good idea. app for phone. Para paperless na and it it saves the environment actually, di ba? Take a photo with it. Guys, you just have to comment and you earn a prize. How how cooler can that be? All right. So for the meantime, uh, we're going to see another video then. So anyway, do you have any tweets there? Yep, I'm actually looking for some. By the way, um, somebody texted, uh, tweeted us earlier where you could get a copy of the presenter's um, slideshows. You can download it soon at the DevCon website. So they're just working on it right now, and they're um, gathering all the um, all the soft files. But for the meantime, I'd like to thank our sponsors. This is co-presented by. We have GitHub. Globe. 
Smart. Orange and Bronze. We also have our gold sponsors. We have Dell Tech. Firefox. Silver sponsors, Microsoft. Fast Track IT Academy. Accenture. Power Max Center. And we also had Tech and Media Partner. We had Stack Overflow. Speed Magazine. Philippine Web Designers Organization. Drupal Pilipinas. When in Manila. Said TechTalks.ph. We have WebKeek. Blackberry. We also have Active Show. And GMA News Online. Thank so you just, so much, guys. Guys, just enjoy your lunch. We'll be um, resuming back after, I think, half an hour. Would that be fine? After your lunch, you have a few minutes to go around the mall, perhaps. Yes, yeah, but you can converse with everyone. But uh, uh, we are reminding everyone to please just stay here inside so you can win the raffle draws later. All right, so have a good lunch, everybody. We'll see you guys later. So those who um, who you mentioned earlier about their tweets, mention them and please do claim your prizes here at the right side of the With stage. With your valid ID. Yes, and your proof of tweet. Just yes. look for Dom or Kim. And, and also, sino pa yung um, wala pang lunch? Raise your hand or ask any staff. Wala pang lunch? Ano yeah, yeah. here on the right side. Please right, approach so. your staff. They will give you. Alright, happy lunch everyone. See you later. But I'm not saying